going to have a, a lot of navel strength and cleaning up our aura. So this Kriya really helps us to be clear about what we're sending out into the ethers, you know. And um, I was I've been listening to this book just today um, called How to Play the Game of Life and Win It or Enjoy It. It's from this lady that's like from the 1930s, and actually the one I've been in love with, Tosha, mentioned her, and finally I got it. And it's, it's really interesting when you get um, a sense of this wisdom that now seems like some new thing that's been around forever. And it was, it's kind of been neat to have it explained in a kind of a more old-fashioned, you know, bolts and screws kind of way. It was it's not so, woo, you know, it's just like, this is how it is. And, um, and one of the, big, the biggest thing about women is our energy is constantly moving and we constantly create. And if we do not have stability or clarity, then we're just creating weird shit, which you see a lot sometimes, you know, it's like, wow. You know, and she talks about these little stories, you know, and then you have to like, you know, put it in context. But this I thought was such an interesting story. This woman, when she was little, she always pretended she was a widow. And she would wear like these plump dresses and whatever. I mean, that's kind of bizarre anyway. It's like kind of like she's like one of the kids from the Adams family. But anyway, but she grows up, she gets married, and he passes away right away. So, um, and then she's back in that outfit again. So, just these little, like, thoughts. And also, knowing the universe has a plan. So there, and we've all heard this kind of thing. There was another woman who really wanted th this guy named Avi. And he just was not going for it. He, and she tried to elicit this psychic's help to, to make it happen, you know. And she goes, I, could, I would never do that. And she said, um... You know, she gave her this prayer about bringing in love. What happened was, she was, kept trying to get A.B., kept trying to get A.B., and then one day she was just like, you know what, I don't even really like A.B. You know, and she was like kind of done with that. And this other guy came into her life who said all the things she wanted A.B. to say. So the universe was listening, right? But it was like, but not that guy, you know? And I always think back when I was really young with my first husband. I mean, I would beg the universe, please make this work out. You know, and thank God the universe went, no, hell no. No, no, no. The answer is no on this. You know, and so as women, and, and men too, but we're talking about us today, one of the biggest things we want to do is have an inner strength and trust in our own soul and that we are loved, and this is a friendly universe. So that when the answer is no, we know it's so loving, right? So that when you get that disappointment, you know it's really the universe going, I have a better idea. And when we can do that quickly, you know, then we do not waste energy and prana. You know, and I know there are some things where it entails sadness and, and people are ill or you lose somebody. That's different. We have to process our hearts. But even in that, because, you know, I've lost a lot of people I love very much. Eventually, that wave of what the universe had planned for them and for me and there's just there's just never ever ever anything that happens that isn't exactly the way it's supposed to so this is what the outward bound kriya it, it like puts us into alignment and um and then we're going to uh wash our arc line at the end because <laughs> this is where kind of your subconscious actually plugs into the frontal lobe and so, and that influences the aura. So the aura is influenced from here in, out, and out and in. So we're getting our energies on, on today. So rub your hands together. So we begin every Kundalini class with this mantra, <coughs> Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. We need to chant it with deep <coughs> reverence. It tunes us into the golden chain, to the teachers that are at the beginning of this yoga we call Kundalini. 
It connects us also to the most important teacher that you will ever meet, and that's your soul, the guru that lives inside of you. Inhale, take your thumbs to your sternum and roll your shoulders back. See if you can feel an appreciation for your life. Feeling your palms touching each other and plugged into your heart center. Really relaxing into this moment in your life, knowing that every twist and turn, every breath, every person we have met, every choice led us to this moment right now. See if we can open up to miracles. The miracle of being who we are destined to be. The universe has a divine plan for you. It's calling you towards it. It wants you to open up and completely trust yourself. Trust the process of love and fall a little deeper in love with yourself today. Let's tune in and inhale. Om.
the afterlife in this time of year. Scorpio leads into Sag, but leads into that birth of the Christ energy. When we look at the way this life is set up, the wheel of astrology, the turning of the seasons, it is so beautiful. Feel your part in it. How it is today, there's that cool crispness, but the sun is bright. What is that light touching inside of you today? Inhale your shoulders up to your ears and down quickly. Really shake off any fear, any worry, any anxiety. Literally let the weight of the world drop off your shoulders. Keep up. Sit, no, sit, no, 
the chin, gaze up into the third eye. Now out the top of your head. Let the eye gaze go all the way up, 10th gate, hold it. Exhale. And just take a moment. Feel the effects of this Kriya. You can feel how this gives you stability. And stability is the key to a woman's intuition. You have to be really stable to trust those kind of thoughts. There was this woman who only had $8, and the healer was like, well, bless that. Be grateful for that. And trust any hunches you have. She goes, I keep getting this hunch to go back home, but like, it's not good there. She goes, you got to trust the hunch. And she went home, ends up having this interaction with a relative, and she's given thousands of dollars to help him on this certain thing. And in her mind, going home was where the Poverty started. Why would she do? Why would she leave New York? This technology gives you the strength to follow your intuition. Inhale deep and sigh. <sighs> you know, Satkriya also gives you the strength to not give your power away. You know, a lot of times you have a hunch or an intuition and you go get, you know, votes from your girlfriends. And half of them will vote it down, I'm telling you. Right? You, you, you've got to be careful with that. You know, this is your golden ticket, that intuition. So come onto your back and just take a little rest before we start the torture. I mean the outfit. <laughs> just a little tidbit on what's coming next. Just open your heart and relax. Take some deep breaths. Love the one you're with. Use all the exercises to bring healing to you now. Let it just flood over you. Isn't 
deep. Exhale out your mouth. Okay, this is the beginning of the creator. You're going to stay on your back. It is a little odd. But so you pay attention to this. So you, I would put your hands on your hips if you have any low back issue. If you're great, then you don't have it. All right, so you're going to lift your left leg 90 degrees, then the right 40 to 45, and then bring them down. And then the right 90, which means straight up. The opposite leg is halfway in between, 45, and then down. And you keep doing that. Up, halfway, down. Up, halfway, down. Get into a meditation with it, because you're gonna be here a lot. So go as slow as you need, take some breaks. You are building the navel center. Now this is kind of hardcore what Yogi Bhajan says about this Kriya. But he's a wise man. And he's really trying to help us be the change in this world. <laughs> All right. A woman needs two hours of tough exercise each day in order to be as productive as a man. So I thought, well, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> All right. Every 72 hours, all of your cells change. But in the case of a woman, it needs to have an accelerated or stimulated energy to do so. By nature, a woman is her childbearing capacity is very inward. To remain outward, she has to do required exercise. A woman must stimulate these parts of herself so that she can stay young, healthy, and clear. So she can meet the challenges and not feel dismantled. It cannot be done by makeup. <laughs> it can only be done by intensive exercise. Um, and the principle of this is to get us into a place where when we do our meditation, we get so much out of it. Now, I was always the kid that didn't even like to tap dance fast. So, you know, but I know that the, one of the biggest roots of my depression is the lack of movement. You know, I love those kriyas where you stand and shake. It helps so much. So even if you hate this whole thing, you're still going to feel better and love me by the end. <laughs> Keep up. You're doing so good. Close your eyes and breathe. Have an experience with your body, with Kundalini and this technology.
last 20 seconds.
Inhale, come straight up. Exhale, and turn to bring the palms to the ground if you can. Inhale up.
mother, the seductress, the sister, the creatress. <clears throat> Breathing into the grace and the blessing and the complete honor to be a woman this life. our alignment to how we really lead and help heal this world. There's a new way emerging for us. Taking back that feminine beauty and power that is totally different from the masculine. And trusting that as your greatest strength. All right, last really fun pose. Come on to your tummies. <laughs> so we're gonna go into arch. So the first thing about our um, a bow pose, I mean, is try not to let your knees go out from your hips because it's just bad for your back. So just have a consciousness like, okay, I'm trying to keep my knees in alignment with my hips. All right, now reach back and grab those beautiful feet or if you can't get them, reach towards them. Now you're going to go, inhale, you're going to come up as high as you can, and then you're going to exhale the thighs down on the head. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. You're doing great. Keep up.
left knee into your heart, extend the right leg onto the ground, and take that left knee to the right hip in a spinal twist, and breathe. to the Leia mantra, but lots of things can be called Leia, and it's really just a certain way of chanting that is very hypnotic and rhythmic, and certainly this, this chant is. This chant is to a practice of meditation that gives us intuition and the power to heal. It says, this mantra was guarded as a secret gem. It's the key to the inner doors of the Nod. It is the realm of the creative sort, sort, sound. If you listen to the sound of the mantra and concentrate on its subtle sounds of the mantra, you will become absorbed in the unlimited domain of your higher self. So um, this lady is Sat Kartar. So you know, every once in a while, I think it's important to play somebody from the old days because Yogi Bhajan really worked with them on how did the sound current sound, what was the rhythm like, you know, where it's beautiful now, but it's a lot more creative, where she's gonna get in a voice current with this and she's not gonna move, it's gonna stay there. So here is the mantra. Ekankara Satanama Siddhiwaha Hegu. So let's try it. You repeat after me. Ekankara. Ekankara. Satanama. Satanama. Siriwaha. Siriwaha. Hey Guru. Hey Guru. So what you want to do is you're going to be sitting nice and tall. When you do the ah, uh, you want to pull the navel. So Ekankara. Satanama. Siriwaha. Hey Guru. But you want to think of the navel as like a pump. And your energy is not really staying there. That ekankara, the first one, kind of pulls it into the first three chakras. You know, satanama pulls it into the heart. And, you know, that siddhi, waha, into the third eye. And then, hey, guru. I mean, when you really, and also, the way she recorded it, it sounds like spinning, which is super good because you can really feel the mantra working on you. And I swear, I did this one for 120 days when I was first in Kundalini, and now that I was talking about people, I don't want to do it Anyway, on that, hey, you do, I mean, you really start to feel like, go, this is why, and we, you know, it is good like to have something on you right now, because it is gonna start going up into your aura. That's why this is so good about, um, 
You know, even if you took one of your blankets and just had it, you know, it doesn't matter. And you don't have to. We're not going to do a ton. But if you did a ton, you'd, you'd walk out of here going, why am I tying my body? <laughs> don't worry, that's not going to happen. Um, but that's why I wear this funny thing. You know, I don't do it for looks, that's for sure. <laughs> um, anywho. So, <laughs> so we're going to do it. Ekankara Satanama really sits like a regal, awesome goddess. That is the look. Can I take your picture? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's put it on Facebook. <laughs> I love you. No. All right. Concentrate. Open your intuition. 
takes you to the subtle realm of creativity. It awakens the kundalini force that energizes all of creation. It awakens your awareness and empowers you to sense your subtle body, the aura. The practice of this meditation gives you intuition and the power to heal. The word Leia refers to the suspension of the ordinary world. The Leia Yoga fixes your attention and energy on your essence and your higher consciousness. It lets you, uh, it lets you absorb into the bliss and creativity of consciousness without the normal distractions and attachments having power over your reactive awareness. This mantra opens up the secret book of Leia Yoga. It enables you to consciously remember and experience the link between you and the Creator. You will know the constant flow is within you. It will etch it into your subconscious and memory. And in that experience, your true identity, this will gain liberation.